Gentlemen, this is a paid video request from a subscriber who would like me to discuss beauty standards and what attributes the Thai women or ladyboys who succeed in the nightlife have. In my time in the red light areas of Pattaya, I have observed the faces, bodies and behaviour of literally thousands of different Thai women and ladyboys. The bar girls are working in a business where youth, beauty and physical attractiveness of both the face and body are key determining factors when it comes to successfully competing with each other and standing out to be chosen by a man who, when he walks by, only has a split second to make up his mind as to whether he will stop and engage with any one bar girl. In an environment like this, where there are literally thousands of bar girls selling their services, where the supply and demand ratio favours us Westerners, and where competition is intense, the bar girls that do extremely well, as in get bar find the most by new and or existing customers, are the ones who are the most beautiful and or the most sexually alluring. The ones whose facial attractiveness, enhanced by makeup and cosmetics, and body attractiveness, enhanced by the sexy style of dress that they wear, appeal to the highest number of men. It's important to note that human physical attractiveness is quantifiable. It's something that is capable of being measured. There are those who will say that beauty is subjective and that cannot be quantified. But this is not accurate. Dr. Stephen Marquardt is a maxillofacial surgeon in California who has conducted research in the area of facial attractiveness. He scanned into a computer photos of hundreds of beautiful female models and used them to develop a facial mask. Essentially, he found that faces that fit the mask are beautiful and that that beauty elicits a beauty response in us. There's a lot I could talk about here on the subject, but Dr. Marquardt has explained it all much better than I could, and I highly recommend that you check out his website at beautyanalysis.com to find out more about this important topic. Take a good look at the historical and contemporary beauties and how closely their faces fit the beauty masks. It's a fascinating website. I might add that I myself had maxillofacial surgery back in 2008 to improve my smile. I needed orthognathic surgery and orthodontic braces as my upper jaw and my chin were slightly misaligned. At the time, I was pursuing male fitness modelling and I wanted to improve my appearance for both myself and for my work in front of the camera. Now, what the bar girls of Thailand are all essentially trying to do is to mould themselves both their faces and their bodies, to fit as closely as possible to the golden ratio, 1.618. The makeup they use on their faces is to try to get their faces to more closely match the beauty mask. The bar girls are not conducting research, of course, into beauty standards. They simply go by their intuition and with what works, knowing what men are like and what men find attractive. They copy their bar girl friends who are playing the same game for the purpose of attracting a man who will pay money to have sex with them. Cosmetic surgery is a part of this game where the ladyboys especially are very focused on growing their hair long because men like long hair on their women or their ladyboy and getting boob jobs because men like beautiful breasts. The subject of human beauty in red light areas of Thailand is a fascinating one for a number of reasons. One of the most interesting things to me is the environment is commercial, where prices are quoted, money is changing hands and transactions are taking place with both buyers and sellers. The sellers competing with each other to make sales to buyers in a marketplace, a highly competitive environment. What's really interesting about this is that we can analyse the market track sales, and generate analytics, and develop statistical models to accurately model and make predictions about
about future business. When a buyer spends money, they're putting their money where their mouth is, so to speak. They're saying, this is what I like, and this is what I am willing to pay money for. Dr. Warren Farrell did an analysis years ago for one of his books to try to determine the difference between men and women based on where they spend their money on magazines. He found that women spent their money on magazines like Better Homes and Gardens, and men spent their money on magazines like Playboy and Penthouse. His results indicated that women value home and security, which are externalities to men, whilst men value sex, sexual variety, youth and beauty. Men value women for themselves, but women value what men can do, their utility value. Now, I don't run a bar in Patea, and I don't have the numbers to back up my analysis here. I do, however, have a valued friend in Patea who runs a bar with his ladyboy partner. I'll run this video by him. I might be able to ask him for some numbers, which would help in my analysis, but I suspect we already know what the results will look like, and my own experiences in Patea, as well as watching the actions of other men, indicate to me that, firstly, the most beautiful or sexually alluring women and ladyboys will be bar fine the most, can quote and receive the highest prices, and will make the most money. Two, the majority of men will spend their money on the most youthful, physically beautiful, or sexually alluring bar girl. Three, the women or lady boys who have enhanced themselves via cosmetic surgery will do better than those who have not taken this important step. The most important surgery for the lady boys being breast augmentation, rhinoplasty, and lip filler or augmentation. Any surgery that increases the male physiological response to female beauty will be advantageous to the earnings a woman or a lady boy can make from us men. Men will pay more money to be with younger women or lady boys. The younger and more physically attractive the woman or lady boy, the more men will pay, all else being equal. The bar girls whose bodies and faces most closely fit the golden ratio will be considered the most beautiful and will have the most opportunities to sell their services. New male visitors to Patea who have not yet established long-term relations with a particular bar girl will be drawn most strongly to the bar girls who are the most youthful, physically beautiful or sexually alluring. By competing with each other in a highly competitive and commoditized marketplace, positive variations in physical appearance will be advantageous, and this advantage I have noted some bar girls achieving this by two different means, surprise and nationality. Remarkably different style of dress, or strikingly different nationality. Negative variations in physical appearance will be disadvantageous. The older, less physically attractive bar girls will make less money. Positive variations in personality, behaviour, deportment or overall manner can make up for negative variations in physical appearance. The less physically attractive bar girl will do better in a no-pressure bar located somewhere out of the main or prime tourist area and will do well to stick with long-term clients. The most physically beautiful bar girl that is also able to elicit primarily positive emotions in us Western men as per Plastic's Wheel of Emotions will succeed incredibly well and will generate a lot of repeat business and develop a cult-like following. The strength of erection and orgasm achievable by us men with any one woman or lady boy is directly, directly proportional to the physical beauty, youth, sexiness and positive emotional elicitation as per Plastic's Wheel. Youth and beauty in particular is strongly correlated with strength of erection and strength of orgasm. The intensity of devotion towards any one particular woman or lady boy will be based on how incredible the sexual experience is for the man with that particular woman or lady boy. Each sexual experience will be compared and contrasted in the man's mind and over time a favourite or lead, preferred woman or lady boy will emerge. 
This woman or ladyboy has the man's heart and mind and has a degree of power over him and his life. Over time, the intensity of orgasm and overall sexual experience will diminish if the man goes with the same woman or ladyboy. The sexual intensity diminishes somewhat slowly in a straight line pattern over time and the diminishment cannot be stopped regardless of how youthful, beautiful or sexually luring the bar girl. But other long-term feelings of attachment like love can grow stronger, particularly where the bar girl is eliciting in you all the positive emotions on Plutchik's wheel. Due to the situation on the ground in the Western world, the bar girls can be working on you whilst you are not present physically. In your mind, you're imagining the incredible sexual experiences you've had in Thailand, and your fantasy life is strongly associated with your bar girl. Each interaction back home with Western women strengthens your resolve to get back to Thailand, where things make sense. Back home in the West, we're out of the Pattaya bubble. We're no longer participants in an economic system which rewards beauty and physical attractiveness. We're back to being part of our local economic system, which, generally speaking, will only see women going to great lengths to increase their physical appearance on a Friday and Saturday night. You know, those nights that they slut themselves up to tease you in nightclubs and bars, but will not go home with you because they can't accurately determine your money, power, fame or status. In the economic system back home, your role has changed from king, buyer of youth and beauty, to servant. It's back to your cubicle, your factory, or whatever workplace where you earn your money toiling away for others. You're back to selling your mind or your physical labour. By the way, I believe the Patea withdrawal, the come down syndrome, is highly related to us men experiencing withdrawal from female beauty and sexuality. If you think about how humans evolved and the environment we evolved in, it was extremely rare for us men to be surrounded by so many different mating opportunities with so many different beautiful women. Once we're away from that environment and back to the drab, grey, western world, our minds and our bodies go through withdrawal. Being out of the potato bubble is painful and an uncomfortable process we go through every time we come home from Disneyland for adults. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the subject of the kinds of women and ladyboys who succeed in Thailand and why they succeed in the naughty nightlife. Before I go, I'd like to say a very sincere thank you to those of you who have responded to my fundraising drive. The donations in total have amounted to $200. I've purchased a high-quality, broadcast-grade Rode Lavalier microphone with that money. Until next time, gentlemen, all the best. I'm the Pretender.